Hey everyone, it's Linda with Embroidery Legacy. In this third design doodler lesson, I'm gonna show you how to create a watercolor effect. We will layer up different colors along with densities to create beautiful doodle designs. So come on, let's get doodling. Let's have some fun layering up some color in our design. So select the backdrop, navigate to where you have this colored orange slice stored on your computer and open it up. We will now select the backdrop Go over to the Properties Docker. Of course, check Maintain Aspect Ratio so it sizes proportionately. Let's lower the opacity for a bit and we'll make the height of this 95 millimeters. I'm gonna X out of that. I'm gonna turn off the grid so it's easier for you to see. I'll add my hoop. And here's an instance where the backdrop didn't come in centered on the hoop. So simply grab it and drag it in place. And let's increase the size so we can see it a little better. I'm going to go to 1 to 3. That's a little too big for my design today, so I'm going to go back to 1 to 1 and then tap on the magnifying glass. And I'll give it a couple taps on my computer and use the hand to center the design so it's easy to doodle over. For this design today, we're going to start with the run tool we did on our previous lesson over here let's select the black I'm going to select the run stitch we will have it set at two millimeters and so we can just start doodling around the details of this orange slice so I'm just going to start right up here and just make all these little craggy bits along the rind of this orange I got this artwork by taking a photograph of an orange slice and bringing it into a third-party Apple app called Waterlogged. And what it does, it takes your photograph and it turns it into a watercolor type drawing. And that made it really easy for me then to save it and bring it in here and I can start to doodle over it. I think it's about five dollars or so. Well worth the money if you are not an artist but want some inspiration on where to get started on your doodles. I love this because it, you can see all the different tonal variations and give some suggestions of some outlines so it's a really good starting point to get a doodle going versus just opening up a blank screen. You'll notice that all of a sudden it popped these little dashed lines on well, if you select the three dots at the bottom and go to settings, I have center design start stop selected. What this does is when you doodle your design, it will automatically ca calculate where the very center of that design is for your needle stop and end positions. This is very handy because some machines require designs to have that start stop right in the center. So this, the doodler takes care of it for you. So you can see that I have the snap to anchors tool selected when I see that red dot. So I can just pick up where I left off and I won't have a jumper trim. So I'm just gonna come here and continue around the design. And it's just sort of random, no right or wrong way. So just use your imagination as you're coming through and placing some of these little detailed lines within your doodle up here. And after we get all of the outlines in, then we'll come back in and add the different fill patterns. So that's set. So we'll come in and start doodling the orange segments. If you've ever eaten an orange, you know that each segment does have some little shape or definition to it. Use kind of the guidelines that you see here on this backdrop to add different shapes to your design to create these segments. So we'll go through, maybe have some two passes in some areas, just one in another, and also add some depth and texture into the design. Come down here and get this segment in. Come back over it. We'll just work our way down through the design. And it is quite relaxing once you get started doodling. And it's really fun to see how the doodle kind of takes its shape. 
come back over here. Just add some more details. And then of course we will resequence this at the end of the design. So the fill patterns will stitch out first. Then this highlight will come back. All the little details of the design will stitch last. So there is this little repetition create some really nice designs. Just kind of get in the rhythm of things. Come back up here. Turn off the backdrop so we can see that already the orange slice is taking shape. Turn the backdrop back on. Next step is going to be placing the rind in the design. You can choose one of your colors right here. This is your standard palette, but also the doodler comes with, look at all these different thread brands. So you can select one that's in your thread stash and use it. And then those colors all of a sudden become available to you. Pick an orange, we'll go with that one right there. We will change tools from the running stitch. We're gonna now go to the fill tool and we'll still keep this three shape selected. I think it'll be easier for everybody to see is if I turn off this artwork. I'm going to now come in here and just kind of follow the outlines that we just placed. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's what's kind of fun about this kind of stylized doodling is it is more sketch work than being very precise. You can have your fabric also lay part in the design by having it shine through so not every bit of the design has to be filled in and of course it is quite all right to color outside the lines. Now we've got our entire orange slices filled in. I'm going to introduce you to this new tool on the bottom. I'm going to select this the complete fill and this is the add whole tool. So what you can do is just kind of come through and tap some nodes on your screen those stitches that are in between these two rows of nodes will remain and the center part will be eliminated. Of course, you can always go through, fine tune and tweak your des design by making any adjustments as you go along. That's another great feature with the doodler is you can come through and change your design as you're progressing through or wait to the last minute. Or if you're working in the iPad app, you can bring it over and then do all the fine tuning on the desktop version. So I'm going to come right through and then I'm going to select that again and notice how all the center was removed. We will select that now. Let's just go through on our Docker right here. Let's open the properties Docker and we will keep the density at four. Stitch length looks good at two. We'll just keep the fill pattern. The only thing we're going to change on this is so it travels on edge and we will change the inclination point so it comes right across right here and that will create some shorter stitches in, in most areas of the design. The next portion will be let's doodle the pith part. That's hard to say. The pith part of the design we will come in and select a color. I'm going to make it gray so it will be easier for you to view. We're going to keep the backdrop turned off again, just makes it easier. I will select that fill tool again. Just doodle another little circle. You can follow along or you can have some areas overlap. Some areas where there is no stitching again to, to use that fabric to your advantage to offer additional color and texture to the design. So we've got the pith for this one. Select the properties as well as when you when nothing pops up in the properties that means you don't have the object selected. I'm going to really lighten this density a lot. So we're going to go to 2.5. The stitch length is fine at 2. Let's just change that fill pattern. And it, again when you stitch these out you'll notice how different patterns stitch out. Use it as a as a guide and a reference when you're doodling other designs. So that's travel on edge and we will change the inclination on this. Let's have this come up at an angle. Let's pop the backdrop back in to have a look at the colors in our orange slice right now. 
The next step will be adding the fill inside of the segments. So select the palette, scroll down and find a lighter orange color. We will have three different colors on our segment of orange, but we, the first one we will use will be a lighter tone. I also want to turn off this gray uh, object behind me because as we go through and doodle and change the density and stitch angles, we don't want to accidentally keep picking up the, the gray background. Under the sequence view, if I select the gray and tap this little icon right here with the little eye, with the little slash through it, it will turn off the gray object from view. It hasn't been removed, but we're just turning it off screen to make going through our design a little bit easier. Select our tool again, start doodling inside of each little orange segment and we'll come around and quickly doodle these. This lighter color yellow orange will serve as the overall backdrop for each orange segment and as we layer up other colored fills on top of it with different densities this is what's going to help create the color blend giving it that watercolor effect. And that's the last one. Let's turn off that backdrop again so we could see it a little easier. Come back to the sequence view and select all of the yellow and come up under properties. Let's lighten this density to like 1.3. I'm going to increase the stitch length to 3. Let's change the fill pattern to smooth on this one and travel on edge. Select the inclination tool and to move the stitch angle of each segment so it looks like it is radiating from the center of the orange. Just quickly come over and do that. Notice how I tapped on the outline. So you could untap on your screen to deselect it. Come through here. And you probably have noticed that there are some little dashed lines. That means that there are some jumps and trims. I'm going to show you how to change the start and stop section of each of these so that the object ends where the next object begins to eliminate the start and trim in between. We come over here. I'm going to select hit select. I'll grab this is our first segment and this is the path edit mode but I don't see any red or green dots so that means I might not have that turned on so which I don't. If you come down here to the three dots select view entry and exit and notice you will see where the design starts and stops. So we'll have it start here and I'm going to move the stop point right up here and then we'll select the next object so that stop point start point is right where the other one ended and we're going to move over the stop so we can make a spot where the next object meets up so there's the stop on that one this is close right here so let's move that start point right there. You can have the stop point. You just want to make sure it touches the next object and it will automatically then connect. So we'll come over here with this stop and we'll move this here. I'm going to move this down here. Notice how that dashed line went away. So we are in fact removing those trims. That dashed line went away. This one must be close enough to touch. Move the start right through here. Move the stop right through here. So it's just a matter of placing your pen on the red or green dot and you can drag it around in place. So this will go here. That eliminated that and I think we're good to go. So we've eliminated all those jumps and trims going through the design. It will just stitch through in one motion. We'll turn the backdrop back on. And also, let's select it because I want to increase the opacity a little bit more so we can start to see some of these 
brighter tones. This one will choose a medium orange. Let me turn that back off, come over to the palette. We'll go with a medium orange. But on second thought, I think we'll go, we'll just pick a random blue color because it'll be easier to see when we create these medium shapes. Select that tool again, just start doodling through here where you see some medium shapes. We will change the densities in this as well as the inclination point. In fact, we will have the inclination point on this one. So it is about the same as the lighter orange underneath. That way, this is what's going to create that color blend. So get that light and dark and this is more a matter of your personal interpretations. So add as much or as little objects as you'd like. And just kind of random, I'm just kind of eyeballing what I see. Come on through here. We have all the medium tones. Let's turn off that artwork again. Do you notice that we do have, because these objects are close together, there are going to be some long jump stitches. So we will use what we did in our previous lesson to remove those. So I'm going to select all of the blue. We'll come up to properties and under commands, watch what happens to these solid lines. I'm going to, on the end command, I'm going to insert a trim. And notice now you will have a trim in between those. If you have some of the objects that touch each other, you can go through, adjust the start and stop points like we did on the lighter yellow background. Select all those blue segments. Click on the Object Properties Docker. The density for this is going to be 1.7. The stitch length is going to be 2.5. Pattern Smooth. Travel on Edge. Let's click on the yellow to hide it. So when we move this inclination points, we don't inadvertently pick those up. So we'll hit the select tool. We've got the blue inclination point, and we're gonna follow along just like we did with the yellow. So it radiates from the center of the orange. Just quickly come through here. Oops, clicked on the outline. So then I just clicked on the fill. move these around. And then when these stitch on top of each other, the, the colors are going to blend really nicely. Great, so that is done. On to the final darker segment of our orange slice. Let's increase that opacity one more time so that you can really get a good idea of where the dark spots are. Pick up the palette again. Just start doodling right on screen where you see the dark spaces. And it's all right if you come over and overlap in some of these other areas. Not all shadows and colors are gonna be the same. Just add a little bit of variety. Making it through. Let's see, I know this little spot down here. Come up and around. And here is our last one. Let's turn off the the backdrop. Maybe you want to add, change some of these nodes on here to pull them out a little bit further if you'd like. But, it, but as I mentioned before, let your backdrop of the fabric as well as these other filled layers help you create some additional shadowing in your design. I'm sure you can guess what our next step will be and that is Select the dark colors, go to the Properties Docker. Let's change that stitch density to 1.3, Travel on Edge. 
You can choose your own pattern. Let's go with three today. And how about those stitch angle, stitch lengths a little bit longer? Let's go with three. Tap out. Now to change the inclination point, just start up here. We just want a little subtle variation. We don't. We just want a little bit of an angle that adds a little bit of texture to the design. You could play around with this and have each one slightly different. You can, of course, make it overlap just as you did the other ones so that, that they have a similar stitch angle. But this will be a nice sampler when you're done to see how the different angles and densities really play on each other. Let's pop those other colors back in view. So pick the gray and the yellow, and this is the unhide button. So here's our total design. We need to change the last two colors so that this, this one is a medium orange. Go with the medium orange here, and then the final one is going to be the darker orange. And lastly, we will reorganize our stitch order. So let's move that outline to the very bottom. Once you're happy with your design, be sure you save it one last time, as well as in your favorite machine file format. Next, let's watch our design stitch out. Notice how we layer all the different fill patterns and colors that they naturally create a different color blend. Even the stitch angles and the way that the light is reflected on the thread changes the color tones. I actually use the same color thread on the rind as the dark section of the orange segments. And notice how it looks like it's two completely different colors. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I really look forward to seeing what you create in the Design Doodler. So keep on doodling.